What is that? What, what, what? Who? What? Visitor. And we're back with second part of behavioral design patterns. In this video, we'll talk about the remaining five of them. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, and now the observer, also known as publisher, subscriber, dependents, even subscriber, listener, all of that names. It's basically one design pattern observer. And what is it for? Well, observer is basically used to notify other components about some events that happened. So what is a good example of an observer? A chat room. And the publisher may be used by everybody in the room to send chat messages, but also it will be used by system to notify like somebody left the room, somebody entered the room, so on and so forth. We want to use an observer when we have dynamic list of subscribers. Do notice that it's kind of similar to chain of responsibility, chain of command, but it has its differences. So one is dynamic, you can add more, 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 but you don't have much control over sorting of those, right? It's whoever was first. And the second one, well, you have greater control over the order, but changing the list of handlers, adding new or removing them is way harder. Implementation of Observer is pretty easy. So we start with an interface, a subscriber. Subscriber will have one method update with one parameter, event. And what it actually means is whenever we have an event, we will call the update method and we will pass it as a parameter. So we can come up with different concrete subscribers, for example, a user class in our chat room or maybe an UI element or anything else that wants to be notified about something that happened. So we then take this event and we process it somehow. And how do we send these events? Well, we have our publisher class. Publisher class contains simple logic to add and remove subscribers from list of subscribers. And whenever we want to notify them about the event that was generated, we basically pass it as a parameter to notify method and iterate over the list, call the update method on every single subscriber, and that's it. Right, strategy. So strategy is a means of defining a family of algorithms that do common thing, but in slightly different ways, depending on some sort of governance, right? And you can make them interchangeable. So it's basically a, a way of taking the algorithm out of the object and put it in a separate class. Most common example that is given is coming up with root finding. How do we do it? We define a strategy interface and it has only one method, execute, or more if you make it more complex. So execute is implemented by our strategies. So in our case, for root finding, we would have to give all of the details of the root that we want to find and the parameters of these methods, right? And now we prepare three classes that implement the execute method in different ways. By foot, by public transport, by car. Easy, simple. All we have to do now is create an object that will accept a strategy on the constructor and call the execute method of this strategy during root calculation or whatever action we want to actually do. Off to the next one. Imagine what would happen if we want to extend strategy a little bit to use it in a different manner. Well, why? So for example, we have a system that has a document workflow and we do different things with those documents, right? We scan them, we upload them to the system, then somebody has to read it, different things approve it, it happen, maybe make some changes right. to it. We basically switch the state of this document and we may actually want the object, the document, to behave differently based on the current state. So instead of creating an object with a fixed algorithm, we would allow it to be changed during runtime. We would basically build a finite state machine. We have these multiple algorithms that are encapsulated with objects and we can interchange them. 
how are we going to do that? Well, we basically extend the state context object. We add setState method. And now we can pass our new state to this object and update it during runtime. And then whenever we call action on this object, it is actually passed to our current state and the state decides what to do with this action. Maybe based on a parameter, it will replace a current state of our calling object with a different one. Right, and other thing worth mentioning is that state may actually store some internal data that will change during runtime, during the life of the object. So whenever you are using state design pattern, you communicate to the other developers, okay, this is gonna be a state of the object, not the strategy, not something fixed. It will change during runtime. That's why we have two separate design patterns that are very common in their construction but very different in their nature. What is that? What, what, what? Who? What? Visitor. So visitor is pretty hard to understand if it's not explained properly. But luckily it's not that complex. So let's start with this use case. We have this system that separates models from logic. For one simple reason, models will be reused in different packages, in different parts of the system. So we don't really want to put a lot of logic into those models, right? Because whatever is valid for those objects in this scope may no longer be valid in different scope in different parts of the system. So what we are going to do? So we create these plain objects, right? POD like plain old data, POJO like plain old Java objects, and we don't put any logic into it, except one thing. We will accept visitors on this class. This is the only thing that we do. And this is when entire magic of visitor happens. So we have different components in our system and we agree on an interface saying, okay, every component in the system will accept visitor. So that's covered, right? We have this right part of the diagram covered. And then we go to this visitor interface. And this interface promises that there will be a visit method for every type of component that we are going to visit. And then we implement this in a concrete visitor. We go through every single visit method and we overload it for every single component there is. And in those implementations, we actually put the entire action there is to happen, right? Everything we need to do with this POJO slash POD objects has to happen there on this very visit method in the concrete visitor. But don't worry, there is a method in this madness. Now we create a visitor client class that will contain two things. It will contain our reference to a concrete visitor and it will contain all of the components that visitor has to visit a list of some sorts. And what are we going to do in action of this visitor client? Well, we are going to iterate over every single component in our list and call accept method with our reference to our visitor. So in our container of components, we have actual objects. And whenever we call the accept method on this component interface, we use polymorphism to find the actual object and its method accept. So in that way, components don't need to know about visitors at all. And that allows us to call the method on the visitor appropriate for this particular type. And this is very powerful design pattern. I'm sure you are seeing it now. Just because this plain old data object, this POD, agrees to accept a visitor interface and call visit method on it, it can get infinitely extended in upper layers. And that is the complex but powerful visitor design pattern. Okay, Gang of Four also defines an interpreter as a design pattern, but we are going to skip this one. And that is because interpreter is used as a way of externalizing the problem that you want to solve into a separate language outside of the class. And most likely in real life, you will never actually write an interpreter. That is, unless you write a regex library or a compiler. All right, 
This is probably the longest video so far. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And this concludes the series on design patterns of Gang of Four. And do note that in the future there are upcoming videos on more design patterns because, well, the world doesn't end on those created by Gang of Four. So if you enjoyed, do leave a thumbs up, comment and share the video. If you want more, consider subscribing, click that bell icon and let's see you in the next one.